yo, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day is that you are listening, you are indeed listening to Tony J Experience. Welcome to the experience. I am your host, Tony J. Guys, it has been a week, let me tell you, all right? There has been so much going on, and I, um, I'm sad a little bit today, guys. We lost, um, Miss Tracy Braxton. That was her song, Holding On, from her first album, um, Crash and Burn. She is the younger sister of Miss Tony Braxton. You guys know I love me some Braxton sisters now, all right? Um, and I just recently found out yesterday that Miss um, Tracy Braxton has passed away. She lost her battle to um, cancer. I'm not really sure what type of cancer it is. I saw two different um, types of cancer, and I don't want to get that incorrect, but it was indeed cancer. Um, and I'm just kind of sad about that. You know, she was an amazing singer. You guys know I have something about women in these deep voices, uh, singing-wise. I don't want to date no woman with no deep voice. I want you, hey, Tony, come here. You know, unless it is Tony Braxton, because she can talk to me. Anymore. Hey, Tony, come here. You know, I want to see you. <laughs> but, you know, um, I just want to take a moment of silence. Um, if you guys just indulge me in that for a few seconds. All right, and while we're in that kind of moment of silence, we're going to also take a moment to, to get our meditation right, all right? So I want you guys to take a moment to just breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. And one more time to get you ready for the week. Just breathe in. And breathe out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being present. Thank you for being in this moment. We are playing all Tracy Braxton today. I'm sorry. You know, some people didn't even know she had albums coming out. She did start her stardom um, later. Um, you guys know the Braxton family values kind of put all of them on the map in their individual endeavors. Trina Braxton came out with some songs. Tamar hit the road again with her solo um, career. So we're, we're, that show was very beneficial for all of them. And I am very happy uh, to see that Tracy was able to to, to live in the spotlight um, and not so much the shadows of Tony, but um, it is very sad. It's, it's, it's pretty sad. You know, I thought I had, I had a dream. I had this, this is fantasy of meeting all the Braxton's and now I'm never going to meet all of them, you know, even if I do meet them. So um, we got a lot of interesting topics. It's been a week. It's been a week. Um, I, I, I don't even know where to start, but I will say that I am reclaiming my time. I am reclaiming my energy, and I hope that you all are doing the same. Um, I want to start off first with talking about blocking your blessings and getting out of your own way. I had a coworker tell me the other day. I was I was really stressed, y'all. I was about to go off the deep end, all right? And I had a coworker, and she's probably listening to this right now. She told me, she said, Tony, get out your own way. She said, you have so much talent, and, and here you are at this place, at this place of employment, Get out your own way. You know, you need to start embarking on your, your endeavors. And that meant so much to me. And I want to talk about that. I want you guys to get out of your own way. That's a message. That right there is a word, okay? Get out of your own way. If you if you have a job, a nine to five, that is not your person. That's not you. That's not your soul identity, you know? Everybody, I hope that COVID taught you all how to have some sort of entrepreneurial spirit. I'm hoping that you all were able to come up with a business, a business plan, um, just pick up a hobby, do something. Um, and this is mine. You know, I have a few talents. I'm, I told you guys I'm a private chef. Um, and I mean, I'd be cooking. If you, if you want to see my page, you know, you can follow my cooking page, chef underscore Tony 1906. You guys know I'm an alpha, a member of the coldest and oldest fraternity. Hey, fight. Um, and you know, my music, I, I've been, COVID kind of stopped me from performing, but I've definitely been recording. Check out my YouTube page, my SoundCloud page, and you will see a lot of my music. But pick up your hobbies. Like, see where you can go. I believe, to me, I told you this is my experience. Welcome to you and the Tony J experience right now. And I believe that when this life is over, I want people to say that he left no leaf unturned, no stone unturned, whatever the phrase is. And I explored every aspect of my existence and my talents that the gods gave me, um, my, you know, whatever I have going on, if I feel like I'm good at something, I'm going to go explore it. 
there was a moment where I was doing building furniture. There was a moment where I was building lights. I told you guys I'm an architect. Um, and I sold some lights, some wall sconces. I might get back into that. Um, and like I said, my music, explore your talent. So, you know, hit me up. Let me know what your talents are. If I swear I can support you, I will. I'm going to start um, doing my apparel with my mental health sayings. You know, take a moment to have a moment. Be an experience, you know. Um, let's just do a check-in, you know. I hope that you guys are doing all right. If you're not doing all right, it's okay to not be okay. You know, it's okay to not be at your highest vibrations. Don't take that shit out on other people. Wink, wink. But, you know, it's okay to not be okay. No one is expecting you to be happy all the time. That's not even realistic. If you see somebody and they're always happy, that is either something they are doing intentionally to make everybody else's life better or it's a fraud. It's a fraudulent. It's a front. It's a facade. It's all the F's you can think of. It is fuckery, foolishness. But most of the time, it is like an effort that people are putting forward to make their energy better and to not tank the energy of other people. Um, and that was a word, like I said, to my coworker gave me, get out your own way, start your own thing, stop blocking your own blessings. Most of the time, we're too scared to move on to do something that we feel like may not be received. You may think people are going to judge you. Somebody's, somebody's looking. Your biggest fans are sometimes your biggest haters, and they're not even going to tell you. Sometimes your haters are your biggest fans. Did I say that backwards? Sometimes your haters are your biggest fans, all right? Um, and that's okay. You know, keep keep doing your thing. I'll be performing, and people, they, they, they won't like it. They won't share it. But they're listening. They listen to this shit right now. They listen to me talk about this shit right now because they know who they are. I know who you are. You know who you are, too, hater. All right? <laughs> Um, but it's been a really interesting week. I have, um, had a few interesting conversations. I, I met up with a, um, I went to the store today to get some sage. Um, I went to Botanica. Today was a perfect day to meditate. And, you know, use your Sundays wisely, guys. Sundays are the beginning of a week. It's a new beginning of a week. It's a new beginning of energy. Um, it's an opportunity to hit the reset button, you know. You get a weekend, you get your Fridays, hopefully Saturdays and Sundays to just take a moment and to cleanse yourself of any negativity that may come your way, to cleanse yourself of all the bullshit that you dealt with for the week before. Take a day. I'm going to say it again. Take a moment to have a moment. All right. So I um I have a neighbor. She's actually across the hall from me. Um, and we had a conversation today about mental health. And it's just funny, again, you know, how God puts certain people in your way or in your path. And she and I were talking and she talked to me about her struggles with mental health and the medication. Um, if you don't remember, you know, I think episode one, I talked about having anxiety and panic disorder. Um, I don't believe in the terms mental illness. I think that is a weird term, but um, mental well-being is a, is a more appropriate term. And just medication that she was on and I'm listening to her talk and we're just sharing the story because it was the same experience. She and I had our own individual experiences, but they were they were the same. They were very similar. Um, how the medication kind of worked in reverse for her. It didn't help her out. It it kind of made things worse. So um, if she's listening, Quinn, I'm gonna call you out, Quinn. If you're listening, I would love to get you on my show one day. I would love to, you know, if you're comfortable to share your story, um, and we'll talk about it. Cause I might. She had cooked some curry one day. And you guys know, like I said, I got some some uh, Caribbean roots. And that shit smells so good. And I said, what's that? She said, curry. I said, girl, that smells like my mama's house. That smells like my mama's house. W when you cooking again, I'm coming over. I want, I want some curry chicken. I want some slow-cooked curry. You know, some curry. Curry, curry. Curry curry rice. Curry peas. Curry chicken. Curry shrimp. Curry mushrooms. I'm not going to give you my recipe for curry mushroom. That's my mom's recipe. And if I tell you guys, she is going to kill me. I'm, I'm not going to do that to her, okay? My mom is going to kill me. I don't even know if she's listening to this. She's probably not. But I'm not giving that away because that is a family recipe. But curry mushrooms, you know, just want to saute some, some mushrooms, throw a little bit of curry, some black pepper, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of minced garlic. But you ain't hear that from me. You ain't hear that. I'm going to let you have that one. I normally don't share my recipes. I'm going to let you have that one. That's simple. Um... Sit tight, and when we come back, we're going to talk about um, bothering my ancestors. Stop bothering my ancestors, okay? Leave them alone. Stop asking me to talk to them for you, all right? 
We sit tight, we listen to this song again by Miss Tracy Braxton, and we come back, we're gonna talk to them, talk to you, talk to everybody about stop bothering my ancestors, all right? So sit tight, we'll be right back. I got a confession that I'm secret to love and He makes me so full of passion. I just want him to understand because he has. He has a guy to How much I need him in my life I'm alone in this passion Though I want, I can't have him I'm not used to not getting what I want When I want it, when I want him we are back. We are back. We are back. Once again, you are listening to the Tony J Experience. Welcome to the experience. So I want to talk about bothering the ancestors, okay? You know, I told you guys I'm a, I'm a huge part of my life is my spirituality. Um, I am a descendant of Santeros, um, people who practice Santeria. I am a descendant of um, priests of Odun or what's commonly known as Voodoo. I will throw that out there. I am, and I, I fully accept what the ancestors have um, revealed themselves to be for me, and it has really helped me in terms of um, my mental well-being, my spiritual well-being, and I believe in meditation. I believe that it has helped me deal with so many different things that are going on in life. I am a child of the elements. Um, I am very much so tied to the wind, uh, the rain, the water, the oceans, the trees, and I, I listen to God speak to me through those elements. And I ran into somebody today. I went to go buy some sage, and I had a very interesting conversation with um, what's known as a Babalao, which is a uh, priest of Ifa. Um, if you don't know, I just I'm just going to tell you to research it. Ifa, I F A, and. It was just very interesting to talk to him and hear him talk about um, different aspects of spirituality. And so when I was buying my sage, I always go to this botanica and, and I usually just buy, spend a whole bunch of money there. Not really a whole bunch, but I usually buy my crystals from them, um, my oils, my, my Florida water, candles. Um, and I went looking for sage and they didn't have any. That's not true. They had it, but I didn't want to buy it. But what I do have is Palo Santo. So I'm going to burn that today. Get ready for the week. And he told me, he looked at me, he said, you know, I can see you. I see you. And I'm listening. I'm like, keep talking. He, he gave me a whole reading right there at that very moment. I'm um, just off of my aura and my, my, my energy. And it, he was spot on with everything he said. I see the army around you. I see a woman um, with red hair on your left. I see a man on your right, older. I'm like, those are my grandparents. You, you're seeing them. It didn't freak me out. I've already known that they were there. Um, but I want to talk about bothering the ancestors. You know, people come to me as a spiritualist and a healer. And that shit is draining. Like, but that is our, my spiritual obligation is, is that, I don't know how to say it. So I share these things with people from the African diaspora. I don't believe that black people should share spirituality with people that aren't like us i know that sounds like maybe prejudice racist it's not they have their set of beliefs and spiritualities and we have ours and we have a very interesting history with ours that you know it was a time where we weren't allowed to practice and now that you know we have this religious freedom and the spiritual freedom we need to be more open with who we are if you are a brujo or bruja and you are out here be out here be seen be seen in your energy right so people will call me and they'll say, hey, can you do a reading for me? Absolutely. I sure can. I don't charge for these things. The, the, that's not cool. I'm not going to charge for you. I'm not going to make any money off of this. That's not my, my, uh, that's not my thing. But if you ask me to do a reading for you, listen to what the results are. Don't go asking me to summon and bother my ancestors and then you're not, you're not listening to them, okay? And then every, everything don't require you to call on them, okay? Let the ancestors rest. 
they are in their resting moment. Let them rest. I heard this thing, this um, this this video from a young lady. I believe she's called the Hood Witch on Instagram. If you get a chance, to listen to her because her her visions are spot on. She's really interesting to um listen to and gain insight from. And she said that the ancestors need to rest. Stop bothering them. And I'm gonna tell y'all the same thing. Stop bothering them. I try not to do readings too too often. But lately, I just find myself continuously having to do offerings for them and to, to talk to them. What is going on? What do I need to know? And they have always revealed the truth to me. I have always, you know, been somebody very open to that kind of energy. And so even at work, I, I tell my supervisor, I got a reading. You should listen to it. It might help you with what's going on around here and what's to come. And um, it's been pretty spot, it's been pretty fucking spot on. So, um, but I... I appreciate those who appreciate the ancestors and the spirits and the orisha um just don't bother them don't wake them up to ask them for things and then don't listen to them that is so disrespectful um but i'm here to do readings you know if you want a reading i probably should know you um i i don't know how people do readings over the phone and through instagram if you get a message from somebody claiming to be a babalao b-a-b-a-l-a-w-o it's probably scam. It's probably a scam, spam, you know, no turkey, no ham, no sir, no ma'am, you know, but people shouldn't be sliding in your, in your DMs. You know, there's this thing now where everybody wants to be a priest or a priestess. Everybody ain't a priest or a priestess, okay? Everybody not a practitioner. Some people are leaders and some people are followers. It is what it is. You can appreciate the Orishas. You can appreciate your ancestors, but everybody don't have that connection to be a priest all right i am not a priest i am just simply a practitioner of um santeria and some of the other african-based traditions but it's draining it is really a workout it's a spiritual workout to meditate and to um talk to these groups cleanse your house on sundays guys clean it sage it pray over it um, whatever your religious beliefs are, you know, that help you reset your days, do it on Sunday. But don't bother the ancestors unless you need them, okay? Me, don't bother me unless you need me. Don't ask me for advice and counsel and you're not going to listen to me, okay? That's a problem. That's problematic, all right? Um, don't bother your ancestors. Like, But I do want you all to build a relationship with them. I want you all to, you know... If you got a picture of your grandma, your grandpa, you know, papa, mama, um, abuela, nana, whatever you want to call them, build a relationship, build an altar, put these people there. And ancestors aren't always human either. Some people have familiars and they don't even know it. People think of familiars like Sabrina and witchcraft and charm. And the basis is still there. Everything isn't always what it seems to be. I have a coworker and she had a very deep connection um, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually to her dog. And um, the dog came at a perfect time. And when the dog passed away, it was also at an interesting transition moment in, in her life. So, you know, appreciate your familiars, pre appreciate um, whatever way the spirits present themselves to you. It may be a plant, it may be a dog, a fish, a cat, um, a piece of clothing, a scarf, a ring. I had a bracelet that my granddad um, used to wear, and I have it. I don't wear it, but I have it. And so I um, appreciate how the ancestors speak to you and, and, and try to get your attention. But don't bother them. Let them rest, all right? When we come back, we are going to talk about people. And people you know may become people you knew, all right? So sit tight. We're going to listen to another song by the Tracy Braxton. Um, who I'm hoping is gaining her rest, who has transitioned to the ancestral realm. So sit tight, and we are going to return to the I've been taking you out on the town. Fancy place, they're showing you how. Anything to get next to you. But tonight I want to spend some time inside. I'll come and pick you up around nine. There's so many things I want to do to you, yeah. Tonight will be the perfect time to stay.
Perfect Time um, by Tracy. Um, are you guys celebrating Lent? I, you know, I don't really celebrate Lent. I don't, I want to say I observe Lent. You know, I do take that time to fast from something. And right now for me, it's Coca-Cola. And I am struggling. Um, I drink a Coke every morning, okay? And, uh, you know, I don't know what's in Coke, but I, I mean, there's something in there. Cause that thing is addictive. I don't even like Coke. I don't even like dark sodas like that. But um, I made everybody at work, you know, hold me accountable. Don't y'all let me drink this Coke. And you know what they did? They put two cans of Coca-Cola on my desk at work, y'all. Two cans. That is, the devil is at work, all right? The enemy is at work. I love me a Coca-Cola, all right? So I'm giving that up um, for the next 40 days, for the remainder of these 40 days. And I had to be realistic about Lent and um, what I could give up. If you look at how Lent is referenced um, in the biblical text, it, it really should be something that is almost impossible or a real sacrifice to give up. My mom doesn't believe in giving things up for Lent as much as taking things on. So for her, it may be working out more. Um, and I, I do appreciate that you're taking on something. So that's interesting to do also to stay diligent in that 40 days. And I do meditate on, on what I'm what I'm giving up or trying to give up or sacrifice in that moment. Um, so for me, it's Coca-Cola. So, you know, some mornings my, you know, last week my eye was twitching for a whole week and it had nothing to do with Coke, but I bet you the Coke would have helped me out. It would have kept me calm because people were pissing me off last week. All right. And the week before that, okay. And, and the week before that, so, <laughs> so you know, um, I like, I want to hear what you guys are giving up. So, you know, be sure to email me at, uh, Tony, the artist, oh six at gmail.com T O N Y D A A R T I S T O six at gmail.com. Let me know what you're giving up. And if you want me to talk about a topic, I'm here for it. I, I you know, you need some advice. It can be anonymous and I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, and so one thing, you know, one of my best friend, Shaquille, I told you everybody should have a hashtag Kiki. Um, Shaquille is my best friend and you know, we just, had a clash, but you know, we worked it out today. We worked out the last couple of days and that's what we do. You know, we, we have fallen now. She get on my nerves. I get on her nerves. We come back together. All right. And we were talking about, you know, we had a friend, um, she's known since elementary school. I've known since, um, maybe middle school, high school. And we had gotten really close during college. And then, you know, life happens and she had a baby, had to drop out of school. She did finish her degree. So we want to congratulate her for that. And we did. And I think that we just grew apart, you know, um, and that's okay. You know, we can't, we didn't fall out on bad terms. We just grew apart. And that's what I want to talk about. It's okay for people, you know, to become people you knew. All right. Don't hold on to dead relationships. And I'm not saying in a bad term, you know, when we were friends, all of us, it was good. It was good for that moment, but things evolve, relationships evolve or dissolve. And in this case, that's what happened. It dissolved. Holding on to their relationships is detrimental for all parties involved. It is toxic for all parties involved. Don't hold on to people that don't want to be there. All right. Um, and don't force people to stay in your life. People want to walk out, show them the door, you know, show them the window for them to jump out of, show them the door for them to walk out of, let them go. And same thing for you. It may not be somebody you're letting go, but people are trying to let you go. Don't just keep popping up in people's lives. You know, I want to check on you for what? I'm saying, you know, I'm just saying, hey, why? I'm not one of the people that just keep you around for the sake of keeping you around. What you doing here? What you want? What you need? What you want? What you want? What you need? All right. Why are you here? What you want? What part of my energy are you trying to steal from me today? What part of life are you draining from me today, guys? Let people go. Let them go. Let it go. Y'all like that? Let it go. <laughs> um... Let them go. You know, if people want to walk away from you. That's okay. It's it's not a bad thing. Pe things change. People's relationships change. Um, sometimes it hurts to let people go. Sometimes it hurts to hold on to them. Sometimes you just have to check whatever the lesser of two evils is and let them go. Um, wish people well and send them on their merry way. You know, I, I don't wish anything negative against anybody um that's a lot of energy to hold on to it's a lot of darkness to hold on to and i don't believe holding on to darkness 
And I just saw this thing. I'm going to read it to you because I sent it. I had this app. I recommend everybody to download. It's called Sage. Um, and I ain't pay for it because Tony's broke. But I'm going to tell you what it says, all right? It says, the week of March 13th, 2022, Sage, your weekly cosmic energy report. The full moon is in Virgo this week, y'all. It reminds us that we are capable of manifesting our dreams and attaining our desires. The light is returning and we are moving into balance and renewal. This week, we get to dance in the light of the full moon of Virgo. This earthly moon reminds us that we are one with the earth and one with spirit in divine balance. The duality of light and dark is necessary. You listen to me? The duality of light and dark is necessary. <laughs> dance in the darkness and dance in the light for both offer us so much beauty. Everything in life can't be happiness. I just said that, right? Everything is not always light. You know, my practices involve sometimes working with light and sometimes working with darkness. And you have to embrace both sides of that. There's no such thing as black magic or white magic. For both of them are nature, all right? Nature is neither black nor white, light nor dark. It is. That's it. It just is. It is. That's a simple statement. You see that? It is, all right? Appreciate the light. Appreciate the dark. Know when to access each one. But sit with both of them. Sit with your light. Sit with the darkness in your soul. All right, and, and be able to dance and appreciate and manifest within each one. I want to talk about right now manif manifesting yourself, manifesting your future self. And I'm going to tell you all one of my experiences. Believe it, don't believe it. At the end of the day, the, the story, the moral of the story, it, it, it is. All right, summon yourself. Before I moved to Georgia, I was living in Baltimore. I told you things weren't going so hot right before I, I moved to Atlanta and I meditated. I was really in a bad, I was in a dark place and I remember meditating. I had some of my Orisha music playing and I went into some sort of trance. I remember laying on the floor in a circle of crystals in a circle of candles meditating and seeing myself talking to myself in that moment. It was that it was me from that particular current moment talking to the future version of myself. And let me tell you what happened. This is this is honest to God true story. The current version of me was battered. It was almost like I was in like tattered clothes. I was like wandering through the woods. Um just running, 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 running. What I was running to, don't know. What I was running from, still don't know. And I sat there and I saw a version of myself with red hair, which I do have right now, <laughs> in a blue suit sitting on the stool. And he said to me, he said, sit, let's talk. And he told me, he said, you are going to turn into me, but you have to embrace me. You have to open yourself to me, to receiving me. I had to open myself to receiving myself. And I call him the man in the blue suit because I hate the color blue. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate the color blue. All right. But there I was in this blue suit. I was happy. I had this red hair and I was smiling. And he told me, he said, you're going to move to Atlanta. You're going to be a senior city planner. And most of all, you are going to be okay. It's going to be okay. What he showed me in that vision at that moment was divine. It was a divine experience I was having at that moment. I was a human being having a divine experience. You know, I told you guys before we are divine beings having human experience. But at that moment, I was a human being having a divine experience. And everything that he told me at that moment I did walk into, I became this man, this blue suit, and I love my blue suit. It's my, my armor, it's my shell, it's my protection. And everything that he was, I, I am at this moment. I really believe with all my heart and soul that I summoned myself from the future. I needed some sort of guidance. What am I doing all this for? Why am I going through this anxiety and panic disorder? 
what is this teaching me? Not so much why is it happening to me, but why is it happening for me? What am I supposed to be learning? Why is this happening for me? See, I don't believe in self-victimizing. Everything that you all do or go through is to teach you a lesson. When you refuse to learn the lesson, you know, history repeats itself. Let us see, got the song out um, called, um, what's the name of the song? Shit. Oh, <laughs> same love. She says, history is better on repeat. And the rest of it is about some kind of love song. But that was a powerful statement to me. History is better on repeat. Because you're going to learn some shit from that. You're going to learn something, some sort of lesson from that. I encourage you all to summon your future selves. It ain't no real deep, powerful ritual that you think it might be. But really sit and, and think of who you want to be in a month. Two months, three, a year, five years, ten years. What do you want from yourself? And then make that shit happen. Summon that shit to yourself. Manifest yourself. Manifest yourself. Bring yourself to yourself. Manifest yourself. Bring your current self and your future self together. Have a conversation and figure out how you're going to get to where you want to be. Do you want to work out? What does that look like for you? How are you going to get there? Do you want to learn something? Do you want to learn a language? How are you going to get there? Do you want to go back to school? How are you going to get there? Are you just trying to get to the end of the week? How are you going to get there? All right. Manifest yourself. Meditate. Sit with yourself and bring yourself to yourself and, and become yourself. All right. Everything in this world is about evolution. Nothing stays the same. Everything evolves. Everything changes. Rochelle Farrell and George Benson. You know, I'm a music person, so I'm going to reference music now. Rochelle Farrell and George Benson did, I'm sorry, George Duke did this song, um, which I think is actually a remake of another song called Everything Must Change. Nothing stays the same. Everyone must change <laughs> no but so seriously though, go listen to that song the lyrics are really deep everything must change everything and everyone must change nothing stays the same um manifest yourself y'all don't just be sitting and stagnant and be sitting and in, in, in just sitting in your present you know your present at some point was the past his present at some point becomes the future and sometimes your present is the present but summon yourself to yourself and manifest yourself Bring yourself to yourself and become yourself. I took right one now. day at a time, and now I'm at the borderline. Oh, just like Madonna, like I'm gonna lose my mind. Don't wanna move too fast, I just think it's better. Yeah, we just get it out, let it out, lay it on the line. Don't we are at the end of our podcast i'm really sitting here trying to figure out what my plans for the summer are you know i'm, I'm i guess spring i'm, I'm kind of jumping the gun but i'm thinking about getting a little cabin in the woods and um these getaway boxes i don't know if you guys have seen that the getaway homes getaway cabins it's really just a box in the woods and i'm gonna go out there and take a vow of silence um just for maybe like a weekend and just become one with nature become one with nature I hope you have enjoyed episode, I think this is episode four. I'm pretty sure it's episode four, I think. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm hoping that you have gained something. Welcome to my experience. Um, it It's becoming so much easier and so much more fun to do these podcasts. I was really nervous, like I said, at first, but we are on episode four, guys. 
Um, and like I said, you know, definitely want to extend my deepest condolences to the Braxton family, to um, Tracy's husband and and son and grandbaby. Um, this is such a hard thing for fans, and you know, we are in a different capacity than the family, but you know, I listened to Tracy. I, I was so ex waiting for the newer seasons of the Braxton Family Values to come out, and I, I really even wonder if that show is going to continue. Probably won't. Um, but Tracy, thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for everything you have been. I'm glad that you got your moment in the spotlight. And um, <laughs> this next video I'm going to play is from one of the earlier seasons. I think it's season one. Um, and Tracy's at her vocal lessons, and she's um, rehearsing God Put a Rainbow in the Sky, which is a song that her and her sisters used to sing. And there was actually an episode where they went back to their childhood home in Severn, Maryland. And I think the, the, the current owner called the police on them. I don't know why they went to the house thinking you just show up on somebody's property and start singing a song. Miss Ellen had them singing God Put a Rainbow in the Sky. Um, guys, once again, thank you so much for being present in this moment. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a part of my experience. Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram at the Tony J Experience. Experience expelled without the first E. Um, and email me. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Give me some topics. Let's let's see what you want to talk about. And you know, if you want to be a guest on the show, I'm open to that. I'm open to some 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 guest hosts. All right. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Enjoy your week. Reclaim your time and energy. Be one with yourself. Manifest yourself to yourself. All right. Remember, it's okay for people you know to become people you knew. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Perfect. Take care. God put a rainbow in the sky. God put a rainbow in the sky. When it looks like the sun there it is, there it is. will not shine yeah. anymore. Can I do Tony? Yeah. Sky. I just did a Tony. <laughs> hey guys, it's Tony J. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Remember to follow on Instagram and YouTube at the Tony J Experience. Like, share, and subscribe for upcoming show details and news. Remember, if you're thinking about suicide or worried about a friend or loved one or would like emotional support, the Lifeline Network is available 24-7 across the United States. We can all help prevent suicide. The Lifeline is available for everyone, is free and confidential. Visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org or call 1-800-273-8255. Let's all continue to be a light in a world of darkness.